here in Australia, when you own a vehicle capable of going off the beaten track, there's one location above all others that is considered a holy grail of destinations. It is almost a pilgrimage that you must take once in your lifetime so that you can say, I survived the old telegraph track. This track is located in the far north Queensland. It is what would be considered remote. If you have a problem out there, you're up a very smelly creek, is how we would say it here in Australia. So, come with me as I take the pilgrimage myself to travel to far north Queensland where the land is ruled by crocodiles and kangaroos. The road to get there is called the legendary PDR, the Peninsula Development Road. Once you have traveled that road, you know why it is an infamous road to get there. Almost a thousand kilometers or 500 miles of corrugated dirt roads. So let us begin by showing you where I began here on the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia is where I reside. And here is a little indication of the distance that you need to travel. It would be approximately 3,000 kilometers, maybe 1,000, 1,500 miles from my location to the tip. So we're going to begin this journey at a place called Bremwell Station. Here is the start of the telegraph track. Before we begin, let me just roll through a little intro of what's coming up. So we begin this adventure at the end of the telegraph track. A little book of water called Nolan's Creek. Now this creek has claimed many vehicles and it is known to attract many viewers to watch drivers fail to cross the water and drown their vehicles. So, the trick to crossing this little sandy bottom creek is just simply to wait. As you can see, there are many people watching and waiting to see people drive through the creek and also to get stuck. Now the first vehicle that drives through will have a nice solid sandy bottom to drive through and each vehicle that comes through will find it more difficult and more difficult until you get stuck. 
And so sometimes slow and steady can do the job, but to be honest, it's just a matter of waiting and being prepared with another vehicle on the other side of the creek ready to pull you out in case you get stuck. Because this is one infamous creek that has claimed many vehicles. And just to give you an idea on what it would take to get a vehicle out of here, thousands of dollars. There ain't no tow trucks getting in here. And so you can see this is the second vehicle getting through. And even just, you can see him, he's just floating along. And so the tip is to be prepared with a strap already connected to your vehicle, have one vehicle waiting, have people ready, connect it up. And out you go. Hopefully, with the vehicle still working. And so, there's a campsite just beyond this creek where people will hang out. And uh, it's probably one of the most uh, populated locations on the track where people like to watch. So this is the last obstacle in the track. And it's the most infamous. So here's a, here's a fellow here. I think he's checking the depth of the track. Now this is an unfortunate situation. What you're about to witness is someone driving through unprepared and having no one ready on the other side to pull him out. So now there's a saying in Australia, if you want to drive somewhere in the outback, you can take any four-wheel drive, but if you want to get back, you take a Toyota. And this would be an example of a Toyota bonnet underwater, still running, he's stuck. So he was the third vehicle to drive through. And so these guys were not prepared at all. And what you don't know is that there's a hook under his vehicle. There's nothing connected to it. And there's absolutely no way this guy's gonna get that strap on that hook because it's buried in the sand. There's just no way. The driver should have had a strap connected to the front and he should have had it inside his window so he could throw the strap to someone ready to help him. So uh, these people are doing the best that they can to uh, help in this situation. And so there's uh, no other option. The driver of the vehicle says, tie it to the bull bar, which is not designed to be used to tow a vehicle out underwater, stuck in sand. Here it goes. So I'm hiding just in case something breaks and goes flying. And so they're out, but they brought part of the creek with them. So the reason why they attempted it like this was because they were quite emotional and they had a family member in a broken down vehicle just a bit, uh, a bit back on the track. Um, what they didn't know is that instead of having to drive a thousand or five hundred miles to get a spare part, someone parked up just a few feet away from them had the spare part that they needed, a wheel bearing or something like that. 
and uh, they were given the part they needed. And this is why, if you want to get home in the outback, take a Toyota. That thing was underwater for a long time. You know, it should be right, mate. Just drive it into a tree and straighten it up. So this is the campsite just beyond the creek. Ain't no facilities here. You got to bring everything with you and take everything away. So here's another crossing uh, using uh, someone towing a trailer. And so they've already got the straps connected to the vehicle because towing a trailer you'd expect to get stuck. But again, because they're the first vehicle through, they have a nice solid sandy base. And here's a larger, more unique vehicle that we don't see very often here in Australia. It creates quite the wave. Second vehicle. A little bit harder. But he gets through. Third vehicle. Let's see what happens on this one. Makes it out. Fourth vehicle. <laughs> He's going in hard. Uh, he might just make it out. No, there it is. Uh, that's all she wrote. So you can see this guy's got a strap in his window. Ready to throw it. There's the throw, there's the cable connection, everyone's prepared and ready, and this is what you call a successful crossing of Norland's Creek. And this is another reason why everyone likes to sit here and view the people crossing, because uh, it looks easy enough, and it can be easy, but it can also be quite dangerous. So now we head back to the first obstacle of the telegraph track called Palm Creek. And uh, while the track itself isn't really that difficult, it's quite fun. There's lots of creek crossings to do. So here is the, the exit, and uh, no one was getting out of this. There ain't no one getting out. So um, there's usually two to three different entries and exits, and one will be quite difficult, and uh, the others will be easier. So I chose the easier routes for my... I mean, he's almost getting there. I chose the easy routes for my full full drive because what you don't know is just behind these guys there's literally a wrecking yard of damaged vehicles just trying to get through this through this obstacle and so the safest way was just to winch up oh, there's my vehicle all ready to roll the mighty Land Cruiser and the Nissan Patrol. Another iconic obstacle called Gunshot Creek, and you'll see why it got that name very, very soon. So, here in Australia, we pretty much have two types of four wheel drives there's the Nissan Patrols, who like to have stickers that say they pull out. Toyotas, and you've got Toyota Land Cruisers who have stickers that say they like to pull out Nissan patrols when they get stuck. And uh, so here in Australia, we're mostly Japanese vehicles, and uh, 
Well, we don't really have too many American vehicles, but we're starting to get some now. So this is the exit to Gunshot Creek. And uh, just the exit can be fun to get out of. And so the whole point of Gunshot Creek is to go down this little obstacle here. And uh, many people have come stuck here. So again, I chose the easy route. I believe this is the first guy attempting to go down it and he's got um, the guy I was traveling with with the strap connected to his back so he doesn't flip over. Um, again, it's just safety and preparation. But uh, as you can see, the angle that the vehicle's on. So I believe this was the first vehicle of the day to go down the obstacle. Makes it look easy. So that's the Nissan Patrol. Very popular for the drive here. And that's one of the other exits. Um, it's uh, very, very muddy. Um, there's another way through that's a bit easier than this one. So as you can see, there's just so many people. It's, uh, it's quite the iconic location to drive through. And so here's another attempt going down gunshot. I believe he has a strap connected to the back of him as well. Once you got that weight on top, it doesn't take much for the vehicle to go and roll forward over. That's the iconic Toyota Land Cruiser 70 series. Something that you can't get in America. And it's the most basic four wheel drive you can get. It's also one of the most expensive ones you can get. There's uh, nothing like them anymore. Another Nissan Patrol. So I think I'm just waiting for him to go up the exit. There's pretty much only one exit, you've got to go up this. So, you know, a little bit of momentum will get you up there. Someone else just drove down gunshot. Once, once one person does it, others will follow through if they think their vehicle is capable enough to do it. This guy's straight up there. Here they come, more vehicles coming down, gunshot just charging through. Another Nissan Patrol with a few little bits removed. I would assume getting damaged. Here they come, another one coming down. Another Nissan Patrol. So these are our iconic four wheel drives that we uh, tend to come across mostly. That's someone, these guys are driving through the easy track. This is what I did. I took the easy track. I wanted to uh, get home. So you can see how chewed up the track gets. 
when you get like hundreds of four-wheel drives driving through every day. And the mighty Toyota Hilux. He looks rather small compared to the Nissan patrols and Land Cruisers, and he doesn't get real far. Yeah, unfortunately, some of those vehicles make it look pretty easy. A little bit of speed and momentum will get you up there. One of the old Land Cruisers. So that was Gunshot Creek. So I have a little bit of footage of some of the other places, not much of my own car because I was pretty much by myself. So there was lots of small little creek crossings, um, nothing hard, uh, but um, it's just the experience, it's just creek crossing after creek crossing after creek crossing. And uh, there's something about driving a full drive through water that makes you feel good. Uh, but we want to avoid drowning it. Well, there's something fun about driving through water. I don't know what it is, but it's like getting to the other side. All right, this is the entry into that creek, and this guy's got a trailer. And he goes a little bit too fast. And that blew one of his tires out. So, you know, you're a long way from home up here. And so, you know, every creek is uh, a good place to have a swim. And as you can see, there's uh, just lots of people everywhere. The water is beautiful, it's clear. It's a, a pretty friendly atmosphere. Everyone's there to help you. Um, if you need some help, all you gotta do is just ask. I think they had to change one of their tires. Luckily they had a couple of spares. So this is the telegraph track. It's a, uh, it's basically a very iconic location to go. Swimming in the creeks is really nice. It's pretty hot up there. And so you can literally stop at every creek and have a swim. Uh, this is a place called Fruit Bat Falls. So it's a little waterfall. And it's a great place to stop and have a swim. And uh, there's lots of creeks up here. So these are the freshwater creeks. So there's no saltwater crocodiles in most of these creeks most of the time. But you never know where a saltwater croc can be hiding. But generally it's considered these uh, locations are safe to swim in. So not far from here, this is kind of like the middle of the track and uh, there's a place where you can go camping and uh, we stayed here for a few nights just to hang around in waterfalls and relax and uh, it was definitely one of the better campsites that I've been able to, to go to. I think that's at Twin Falls which is coming up. But again you can see all the people. The water is beautiful, so up here the temperature is always hot. Uh, there's no such thing as winter up here. It's wet season or dry season. There is, it's the same temperature all the time. So that's me having a bit of a swim. Just enjoying the adventure that is the telegraph track.
Yeah, so when you have a four-wheel drive, you always think about coming to this location. Uh, this is the camp spot. So there's a few different places that you can hang out on. And so this is Elliot and Twin Falls. I think it's two creeks that end up joining into one. And uh, I got to pull out the remote control and have a bit of a bit of a drive through the water. Again, there's something about driving vehicles through water. So this is Twin Falls. This is there's lots of different places here that you can jump into the water, and uh, at varying different heights. And there's something oddly attractive. It's jumping into the water. I don't know, varying different heights. So I've got the little fellow with me. And there he is. And then what you do is you just float down the creek, watch out for the rocks, and relax. There's uh, something pretty special about a natural type of waterway like this where you can just jump in and sort of float down. Uh, we went to this uh, location a number of times or many times every day we were there and uh, it, it never got boring jumping into the water and going down the creek. Watch out for the rocks. And that has varying spots that you can jump off. And this is Elliot Falls or something like that. So there's just waterfalls and creeks everywhere around here. So yeah, this was uh, where you went to go have a shower. This was the campsite. Teaching the uh, little fella how to start a fire. Kind of tradition to have a fire when you go camping. So I'd like to, to thank you for hanging around and just listening to me ramble on about one of uh, my most desired locations to visit. So you know, I prepared my vehicle that we could uh, live out of and travel pretty much anywhere that we want to go here in Australia, just dependent on water and food. And uh, the tent um, is something that is extremely comfortable to, to stay in and it's uh, very, very convenient to put up and put down. The, the trip itself, it was a 22... 22 day trip that we took that um, I pretty much lived in the vehicle most nights I think I stayed in Cairns for a couple of nights in a hotel and on the way back I remember staying at one of the, the cities of the motel um, but where we slept in the tent uh, pretty much every night put it up put it down and uh, you can see here um, what a setup would look like if we were doing an overnight camp. So we would just basically unpack it, put it up. We don't peg it down, we don't do anything. It takes about five minutes to put the tent up and chuck the mattresses in there. And um, 
to be honest, I've never had a bad sleep in the tent. It's extremely comfortable. It's, uh, I think, the most important part of the, the tent camping was the mattresses. I spent um, some good money on the mattresses so that I would have a comfortable night's sleep, and that was the best money I spent uh, for my camp setup. Also, lights are important too. Uh, so here's uh, a few different angles of the campsite. So this was a, a two or three night uh, setup. So when uh, I'm going to stay for more than one night, I might put up the awning, which will give me protection from the sun, protection from the rain, and uh, it just uh, gives you a little bit more of a space to live out of comfortably. And you can see here on this angle that the when I back the vehicle up, what I can do is I can set up a table on one side, I have a fridge on another side, I've got drawers out of the back of my vehicle, and um, I have lights at night time. And it's a, it's a really, really nice setup to, to live out of, off of, out of the car on the road. Um, thank you for watching this and listening to this video. Um, hopefully you can have a good night's sleep.